welcome to the last talk before um, before lunch break. Um, so this is Kofo. Uh, he works at Brancas. Uh, he's uh, on the backend and infrastructure team, and he has over eight years of experience. Uh, he has a blog in which he writes about web development. And he's trying to build a career being a terrible gamer. What <laughs> game do you play? Uh, I play um, a bunch of Apex and Call of Duty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that so actually is really cool. Working. Yeah. You have he so, has a Twitch, so you can follow him there. Yeah, exactly. I'll put my Twitch blog there. <laughs> <laughs> and his chosen charity is nature.org. Yep. And yep. His talk is on writing open source tooling using AST. So yep, you can start. OK, um, just give me a minute to set up. OK, so hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kofu, as you heard, Kofu Keshava. Um, so um, I'm a software engineer at Brancas. Um, I run my own blog at kofu.dev. Um, it used to be stack code, but issues with the domain register made me switch. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at um, Yoruba underscore dev, but disclaimer, I rarely tweet about um, tech um, content, or well, not really, but I do try to tweet as much as possible about tech content. And um, my GitHub is at github.com slash goforola, and you can follow my Twitch at twitch.tv slash x, whatever it is. But yeah, um, so by the way, this image is graciously provided by my friend. Um, um, you can just check the GitHub link down below. They have a bunch of nice gofa um, artwork. So, okay, first thing, I'm going to be talking on the AST package and how a tool we wrote at Brancas implements it. So first things first, the AST package is, can, is used for writing code to understand Go syntax. And at Brancas, we rely heavily on the AST package to, um, to um, develop and maintain the Gunk package. So basically, Gunk is a tool that allows developers to um, generate proof of both data and um, data access and serialization code without having to write protobuf at all. So you basically just write, um, you, you write your, um, your data definitions in Go formats. So as you can see here, I hope my mouse is showing by the way, but as you can see here, this is the Go format of the, um, of the definitions. So, and it also um, comes with other features like documentation generation and um, you know, um, scoping your service endpoints and things like that. So um, the goal of this talk is, so the issue is um, developers tend to not, um, know about or use the ST package due to its just perceived difficulty and its confusing nature. But in this talk, I'm going to just share how the Gong package implements it, and I'm going to show you a bit of um, the ST package as well. So why did we, or like, what did we get when we um, created Gong? So basically when we, um, when we generally created Gong, we basically had a more streamlined development approach because um, the need to write proto was removed completely. So we just generate, wrote our services in Gonk. I mean, yeah, in Gonk slash Go. Gonk uses the Go syntax, by the way. So we wrote our um, services in the Gonks, in the Go syntax. And it's, it's, it's a more familiar way of writing APIs. And it's just, it, it's, just less, um, it's just less load that developers have to pick up during the um, whole build development pipeline. So also, we also need plugins like um, documentation generation for services and you know, scope generation. So next thing. So how it works is you basically just write your gunk, um, your gunk file. I mean, your gunk code, which is basically the Go syntax. So this is the package, um, the type. So this, for example, okay, let's start with the struct. So in this case, the struct represents a proto message, which has um, properties name and type. So the type is of, a, of an enum, which is a message type. So enums in Gunk are in Gunk are represented by Go's constants. So yeah. Also, um, the need for the PBA and PB um, annotation is not really needed. But then, if you use Gunk, um, if you run Gunk formats on the code, on your Gunk code, it automatically generates the PB um, numeration. Then the JSON, the JSON is pretty. It's just passed to um, external tools like um, DocChain um, and gRPC Gateway. It's also supports gRPC gateway. In fact, it supports basically every two, every protobuf generation, um, protobuf generation, so gRPC gateway, proto, um, proto go, um, Python, JS, everything you can think of. So, for example, this is the folder gonk control slash gonk control gonk, and this is the gonk config. 
So the gun config basically just um, states the commands to be run on the gun file. So for example, in this one, we have generate go and we have generate GS. And if you use the um, if you use the um, protocol generation, you 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 recognize this um, option, which is which just basically sets the import style. I'm not too familiar with JS, but you should recognize the option. So after generation with gonk to generate, I mean gonk space generates in the command line, you get this. So this is the protobuf, um, the file, the protobuf file generated by Go and the protobuf file generated by the JS. The protobuf accessors and serializer, sorry, generated by Go and the ones generated by the JS command. So the gonk syntax basically. So um, this is a list. This was taken from GitHub, by the way. This is just a table of the protobuf types and the gong and their corresponding gong types. So we have double floats and floats, float 32, in 32. So I don't need to go through all of them, but you can just uh, basically see all of that. And we also have um, other types like maps. It also supports other types like maps, which is um, protos maps and um, things like so, and things like channels. So in chime, in gong, channels represents um, streams for proto, proto streams, your service streams. So um, I assume you know how gRPC works, gRPC slash um, protobuf works. So basically this um, service takes in uh, an input stream of messages and gives out an output stream of messages, things like that. So yeah, um, next thing is the docgem plugin. So um, one of the plugins we got is the docgem plugin. Now I would like to display this to you but I think I might need to open this on my terminal because it's going to be pretty hard to you know, display a bunch of lines of code in slides. So I'm just going to switch to my terminal now. And hopefully you can see my terminal. Just confirm that. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So you can't see my terminal. Huh, okay. We'll have to skip that for now. But basically what the docgen package just gives us is the ability to generate documentation based on um, based on the comments passed in. Okay, let me open this on GitHub. I forgot about GitHub. Ah, yeah. So you can you should be able to see the GitHub code. So for example, this is the updated um, hello service that you saw earlier. Now this is the gong tag. So to explain. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, it's to change that. So to explain, I would, um, the, what the gong tags, how they work is basically they just um, allow you set options. And for example, if you want to use things like gRPC gateway, if you want to um, generate swagger, um, swagger uh, documentation, things like that are set in the gong tag. So this is the gong tag for the swagger documentation for this particular service. And if you go to the service definition, which is represented by an interface, so services in gong are represented by um, um, interface and the service, the, RP, the RPC methods are represented by the interface functions. So yeah, if you look at this interface function, this is the, um, this is the um, documentation for it. Now, this particular documentation states that if you want to use gRPC gateway, the path to this particular service is version one slash say hello, it's a get request, things like that. Now, um, the, this documentation is for generating, it's basically for docgen. So this is what docgen generates after I've run the command. So if I open that, if I open the generated command, um, so you see that it generated an empty file and the message is the port file. The port file is for translation or the empty file is basically the documentation. And hopefully this is updated. Ah, yeah. So this is the generated documentation. You can see the, um, you can see the service, I mean, the file name, the, sorry, the API name. Um, the description that we set earlier in the gong file using the documentation tabs and you can see um the response but so this is the response okay let me just open this in another tab so we can you know, compare both of them so yeah so basically as all this we set here i mean here is here so this is basically the api um the api description and the api name and just things like that and how and a sample on how to run the um, API or the API endpoint for this particular service, which is say hello. Now the next thing, go back to my slides, is um, yeah. So the AST package. So first of all, in case you don't know what the AST package is, according to Wikipedia, AST is um, in computer science. It's an abstract syntax tree 
or just syntax tree. It's a representation, it's a true representation of the abstract syntax and syntactic nature of source code written in programming language. So all that jargon just basically means is the representation of a language structure in tree form. So sorry, I'm to grab so the tree can later be used during the compilation process to you know, generate symbol tables and other code generation processes. But the ESC package in Go is, was specifically created, when I'm specifically created for things like tooling, because that way you get access to, you can easily read Go code, you can easily um, um, pass Go code, and you know, just do a bunch of operations on it, which I would get to in a few minutes. Next slide. So what we'll be covering in the ESC package is uh, the ESC package, the ESC file, which is a um, representation of the current file, the generic declarations, which is a representation of generic declarations like um, import, some um, um, type declarations, and things like that. And then spec, which basically things like um, import spec, value spec, and type spec. Then we have the function declarations. Yeah. So the function declarations um, is the representation of things like functions and functions in interfaces. So uh, I think. I was planning on demoing this in Vim, not demo, just showing this in Vim, but Vim is currently not displaying on my code, so I'll have to skip that. It's not displaying on my screen. But yeah, this is what I wanted to demo on Vim. But I guess we're going to have, just have to skip that and dive straight into the code, into how Gonk works. So we're going to be looking at the um, Gonk internals. So the main parts we're going to be touching in the Gonk internals are the generation process, which, um, and the two interesting parts of the generation process is the parsing process where it basically reads the gong files and the translation process where it translates the gong files into proto files. So the first thing we're looking at is the generate.run. So the generate.run is basically called from the main package if the command that was run is gong generate. So we have different gong commands. We have gong formats, which cleans up your um, code, kind of what Go FMT does. So we have gong formats, we have gong generates, and just things like that. So once the gong, generate is called the generate the wrong function is called so the generate the wrong function takes the directory as um, the current directory that we're running and the arguments so the arguments in this case are probably most likely there's that checks for that but they're most likely going to be um, the the packages we want to generate so it takes so the the kind of um, argument it takes is kind of what you would expect from if you're running go build like the um, um the dots forward slash and triple dots behind so it takes them um, it takes it takes parameters like that or you can just pass in gong files directly or just pass to packages then the next thing is so okay let me just cover what this does so once the generate the run file is called we create a generator a generator struct just has the loader now the loader is an embedded struct and so we can call things like loader or load without having to you know um do generator or loader load then the gong packages are a list of gong package. So gong package is a custom struct which just basically represents um, our gong package, like each gong package. So in case you want to run this command on multiple package, the gong package field holds the list of packages. Then the all proto fields just basically holds the list of proto files that are going to be generated after the translation process. So if you look at it, it's a map of strings to the file descriptor proto. So this um, this struct is under the um, proto um, proto gen go slash descriptor discript, um, package. So that package just basically holds descriptors for you know proto syntax and things like that. Kind of like what the EST package does. Then the proto loader is just an empty loader. Yeah, that's going to be filled up later. Then here we call on g dot load. So g dot load just basically scrolls through the entire the, um, arguments and you know generates all the packages and returns the packages back. So we're going to look at what g.load does now. So in the, the g.load, so what the load does basically is, so the first step, which is this one, is it checks the arguments. If the arguments are files, basically if they end with .conk, it doesn't need to, you know, like transfer to .conk directly and look for .conk packages. So it just checks if it's a .conk file. Then at which point you just create a package straight away and just adds every argument passed, which should be a list of .conk files to the gong files, um, um, what do you call it? To the gong files properties. So you know how I mentioned the gong package, how I mentioned the gong package earlier? Now this is how the gong package is structured. So one, it contains a 
tool slash package or package that's basically it's embedded with the tools dot slash package slash package which is basically um kind of um a representation like it's just a more easier it's, it's, it's a representation of the est package as well but it contains like type and type info so those kind of things are part of it now the gong files which is a list of um, the names of the gong files in that particular folder so a gong package is just a folder kind of like how go works so the gong files is a list of packages a list of files in that particular folder then the gong syntax is a list of asc dot files now if you remember what i said asc dot files is a representation for a go file so to speak so it's just a representation of um a go syntax in the go file so as we expect, gonk is written with the Go syntax. So you would expect, obviously, the representation is going to be in the form of ASC file. So that's what the gonk syntax holds. Gonk syntax holds. So it just holds a list of the syntax representation of each and every file in that particular package. Now, the gonk names um, is just basically the names for each gonk file in the gonk package, just things like that. Then the gonk tags, if you remember from this slide, this is the gonk tag. So, it's, and if you, also, if you also look at this, the gong tags are in the form of structs. So um, they're in the form of structs, and the struct definitions are in the um, github.com slash gong slash opts um, repository. So you can see the um, the definition for this particular struct, the swagger open, open via the swagger and the HTTP struct. So back to our slides, back to where we are. Sorry. Yeah. So the gong tag just basically holds each and every gong tag in the um, in the in the what do you call it package. Then it is also each gong tag is also mapped to a node because you know it's a comment for you know maybe a function or a comment for the actual um, file syntax, which is the EST file. So it's basically a map for the EST node to a list of gong tags since more than one so since okay for example since one functional interface can have multiple gong files which we saw here so this has two gong tags i said oh sorry i said files i meant gong tags so this has two gong tags which is one the open api v2 the operation and the http the match tag so back to the slides so that's what the gong tag just holds it just holds the list of tags for each node then import is um it's just a map of the import path to the gong package. So if if we want to import things like the HTTP, that's the um, gong.com slash HTTP, gong, github.com slash gong slash opt slash HTTP, since we're importing this, this file would hold, oops, this file, oops, sorry. Yeah, so this file, the imports, this property, the import property would hold a map to the package path and the gong package representation of that um, import. So the next thing is the proto name, which is going to be used to generate a proto file. Yeah. Um, next thing. Yeah. So you know. So if you remember from here, this step checks if we're um, running gong, if we're um, running the load on gong files. If we are not, then it does a bunch of things. So the first thing to do is it needs to you know, add temporary Go files to each and every sub package inside the package we're trying to generate for. So why does it need to add the temporary Go files? Because if you look at here, why isn't the two slash package the load to, you know, generate the list of packages in that package, list of packages and sub packages in that package. And to do that, it needs to find valid Go files inside there. So it work around for that is just to add temporary Go files that have package name that is taken from the gong package syntax, that is taken from the gong file. So then, um, so basically that's what the L add temp does. Um, here, yeah, we're loading the packages here. I'll get to that in a few. So that's pretty much what this code block does. Now, after that, which is after it has kind of loaded the packages, let me open the um, package. Okay, I'll get to that later. But yeah, so calls on the packages of load. So basically what this block just does is it generates each and every package 
And to do that, it needs to ensure we need to ensure that both files inside the package are not to be ignored. So that's how that works. Um, the next step is to pass the gong file. So this is the one we're really interested in, which is the loader of pass gong, sorry, gong package, loader of pass the gong package. Now, what that does basically is to generate type info, um, pass each gong file into an AST file, generate type info, and you know, type check it. So that's what we're going to be diving into. Then the validate package kind of just checks for gong um, specific errors, which are out of the scope since they don't use the EST package that much. Now, so uh, so I don't know if you can see this properly. I just realized how tiny this will be on the presentation. But what the loader of pass gong package does is just generates the EST file for each gong file and it runs the type check-in. So what the first part of this code does is it looks through each um, gong file in the gong package. So if you remember what I said, a gong file in the gong package, the gong files um, property of the gong package just holds a list of um, file names. Yeah. So it loops through each of them and the parts. So it loops through each of them and it calls parser the pass file. So what the parser the pass file does, it takes in a file set, it takes in the path to the file, and it also takes in options, which means, and the option we're passing here is to pass comments as well. So it takes in that and it returns an AST file, which is this file. Now here yeah, we're just checking for errors. If there are any errors, add it to the package. There's a check for the errors later on for each package. So the next thing to do is, sorry, is to add the, um, you know, is to add the generated AST file to the gong syntax property. So if you remember, the gong syntax property is basically a map of AST files for each file in the gong package. So it's to map the is to add the, what do you call it, the ESC file to the gong syntax. And we also add the name of the file to the gong syntax, to the gong package. Oops. So the next thing we're doing here is to get the package name. Yeah, so we're getting the package name or just the name of that package because we're trying to generate a proto package name. So you don't need to really put too much money. It just gets the package name from each gong file. And if it exists, it use that, uses that as a proto name, which is, Oops, this is blocking, or which is done somewhere below here. So um, the next step is, uh, so here is where the type checking ha type checking happens. So I'm not going to go too deep into type checking because I'm not sure I will have enough time for that. But sorry, so here we're using the types the new package to get, generate type info for the package, and we're attaching it to the package of types. So if you remember, I said the gong package is embedded with the packages, the packages, the package um, um, structs. So yeah, so that struct has a types, a types and property. So that types property just basically holds, you know, type info for that whole package. Then the type, the config is, this is just what we're going to pass to the checker. It just needs a config. So here we're, we're going to um, disable unused imports because, you know, when we're important things like this, they're not directly used in the gong file, they're used as comments. And so that is kind of like a no in go. But yeah, here in, in gong, it works. So we're disabling that. And you know, we're just going to use an importer, which is loader that we created earlier. Now here we're just creating the type info, which is going, which we're going to just use to um, you know, pass in to run the type checker. So once um, we generate the type checker here that types a new checker. Then the checker checks each and every file, you know, just for type validity, everything, type checking, and all of that. So I'm not going to go into that, even though that's computer science 101, which I probably don't remember too much. But yeah, so if there's an error, get the error, add it to the package. Now, the next thing we do, oh, sorry, my mouth is so dry. The next thing we do is to go through each import. Now um, we're creating a an empty an empty um, map of strings and gong package for each import, since that's what the imports property is. Now we're going to look through each and every file in the gong syntax. Remember, the gong syntax is an AST of file representation of the gong file. Now here I'm going to get to this later, but what this particular line does, it takes it basically just passes each gong tag. I'm going to get to that later, but for now we're going to skip that. And now we loops through each file imports. It gets the spe specification of the imports, and you know, it gets the package path, 
which is the path to the imports, then it also runs elder load on that package path. So if you remember elder load, which is what was still currently stuck inside, elder load returns a list of packages. So it runs elder load for the import package and it gets the list of packages. So if there's an error, you know, panic, which shouldn't happen, but panic if it does. Now it then gets, the, it just takes the first package because elder load returns every package and its sub package. So it just takes the first package because we don't need the sub packages when we're working with imports. We just need definitions in the imports. Now, now back to this, the split contact. We're going to get to that now. So the split contacts, yeah. Next. So what is split contact? So the first thing it does, you know, this is just a bunch of functions, but this is where the main thing happens. It gets the comments. Now the comments is um let me just open that EST. I think I should open the EST. Um, Package. So, yes, the file. So, this is the comment here. So, now we get the comments. So, um, we're getting the comments from each, you know, node, and we're just getting the text version of the comments. You know, the text version of the comment removes the double forward slash in front. And now we're ranging through each line of comment. So, as we're ranging through each line of comment, it checks if it has, if the current line has a positive gong sign which a positive gunk declaration, which is what defines gunk tags, if you remember. So it checks if it has a positive gunk declaration and, you know, just generates the um, whole, and just picks the whole, what to call comments lines below that gunk declaration into one long line with, um, you know, um, the line separator here. So now we train the spaces, remove that, all of that. And the next thing, we're doing is that we generate an expression from it using the parser go slash parser package. So the go slash parser package, you know, generates so the parser dot pass expression from it just generates an expression from the gong tag, which is a string of you know the derived gong tag from this comment in this case. So it just generates the expression from it using the file sets and just things like that. Then it assigns the expression to the gong tag here. Then it also gets the type name and value using types of eval. So types of eval just helps us get the type name and value in this case using the um, type info for the package. Yeah, the type not type info for the package, the type um, info for the package basically that was generated earlier using um, types of new package. So it just uses that and you know gets and we get it, um, the type for value, the type value and the type itself. So a lot of repetitions going on there. So basically just appended to the list of gong tags and you know returns it back. And now we have our gong tags here. Yeah, so it has been added to it. It has been added to the package of gong tags, which was here. So, like, so the package of gong tags, which was here. No, back to where we are. Mm. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's yeah, cover this. Okay, so now we're going back to the generator run. This is the lower part of the generator run. If you remember correctly, the generator run, run is what well called the elder root, which called the validates and the pass. Now we're done with the parsing, which is we've generated the EST file um, syntax for it. We've generated the, you know, we've done type checking on it. We've done gunk checking on it and all those things. Now we're trying to translate it, which is where a bunch of EST checks happen. But I can't touch all of that because of time. But yeah, so the translate package. So what the translate package does is it goes through each gong file, it ranges through each gong file, then it appends the you know returned proto file. So this returns a proto file, it appends the return proto file to the um to the G dots proto files. Yeah, which is the generator of proto files. Now it takes in you know the gong package, the gong syntax for that particular item. Um yeah so next so the append file so what this does, sorry, I think I got something in my mind. So what this does, it just runs through each declaration, each um, top level declaration and calls, okay, just runs through each declaration basically. So file the declare, declarations, which is here. Um, yeah, so each top level declaration and calls translate declaration. So what the translate declaration does is it checks the type of declaration use, um, using the token. So if it is, if it is not a function declaration, a struct declaration, or you know constants, or sorry, if it's not a function declaration, yeah, and a 
structural declaration, it ignores them because that is what we're trying to trans um, to you know translate into the proto descriptor into the proto file basically. Now, so this is where the translate declaration happens. You know, so it ranges through the specs, which is the specification for each item in the declaration. Um, let me open the trend, trend declaration. Yep. So the spec is basically each item in the declaration. So if now, for example, this is for the generator and gen declaration. We also have function declarations, which represent functions, as well as functions in the interface. So they also have so now they have a bunch of you know properties, which is dot one, the comment group. The field list is a list of fields, yeah, which is the um, receiver, the um um sorry, the receiver is a list of fields, which is basically just the um receiving structs. So the struct that owns set um, um what do you call it function. Then we have the type, which is the type of function. Then the body, which is a statement. This is just a token by token representation of that. Now, the name is an identifier, which we don't need to touch, but it's just an identifier. It holds the name, it holds the type, and just things like that. Mm. Now, back to the slides. Yeah, so here we're checking each spec in the declaration. If it is a struct type, we convert the messages to struct using, you know, we, um, I, like, I'm, I'm not going to touch that too much, but it just basically has a switch case which checks the um, each field in the struct, the type of the field in the struct. Then it also it now returns the appropriate you know proto file descriptor. So like I said, the proto file descriptor package holds the description for each and every proto file. So it just checks each um, properties, each property in the struct. Then it just gets the appropriate descriptor for that particular type and also pass it the value. Now, so we're appending it to the, you know, message type for the proto files. Um, the next thing is if it's an interface type, which is how services are represented, it also does the same thing, but how it does that is it translates it into a service descriptor proto, that's the file descriptor proto for the proto gen buff, the proto gen go slash file descriptor proto slash service description proto so that service description proto holds information or just the structure of a service um, then declaration so it gets the name of that service from the interface spec um uh hold up okay so from the inter interface spec dot name dot name i think my major issue with the est package is it's easy to get lost in the insane amount of um nesting which is pretty the same for everything about ASC. Um, it's a tree, things get repeated. So then it creates the method, which is the service. That's the proto method, which is a service using the type spec. This is the type spec here, the spec. I mean, type spec dot type. So it just gets the type of method it is, it is and uses that to create the message as well. So it gets the, um, the parameters from the field list, things like that, just a bunch of things. Then for constants, sorry, which are in nums in, in Proto, they are defined as constants in um, Gong. So for constant, if it's a constant, which is an identifier, so a top level identifier is going to most likely be a constant. So it just converts it to um, enumerators. Now to do that, it's just a mix of, um, you know, I'm literally, I'm literally so dry. So, this is a mix of you know um, um file descriptors and their labels so i won't go into that because it's literally a it's it's just a mind boggler so you literally have to um you know have to pass your own proto file then know which combination is for a map of a map of um a map of self string to a struct just things like that so i won't go into that too much and yeah i think that is enough code diving for now and you can just um, check it out to come package. It will definitely help you in your um, in your whole gRPC process. And you should definitely try to use the AST package to do some more um, to create open source tool. I know a bunch of um, of fellow speakers already have, which was, for example, that amazing card demo we saw. Use the use the AST package a bit and other um, other um, speakers. So, yep, I think that is all for now.
Hopefully, I didn't go too much into this. But yeah, it's it's a pity I couldn't, um, you know, show the AST package representation through code because I chose the wrong window when presenting. But yeah, that is enough for now. Okay, thank you so much for the for the talk. It was very very interesting. Uh, I really enjoyed this topic. Um, so far, we don't have any questions, so I would like to take uh, advantage of this and move on to uh, to have this uh, Q&A session um, at the group networking session. And uh, to, keep, to keep on schedule, because we have a special interview now with Christian Haas, who has been uh, uh, facilitating the, this, the sessions. So, oops. <laughs> I meant to thank you again for your time, sorry. Uh, I don't know if I'm still alive. Okay, then I guess I'm still alive and Hello, Christian. Um, Hello, Paula. Thank you for having me. Amazing. Um, so I would like to first uh, thank you so much for the for this uh, for all this facilitation of the sessions uh, of the um, after talk sessions. They have been uh, very interesting from what I hear. Sadly, I haven't been able, haven't been able to attend because I have been here. Mm. Um, so I would like to remind you that uh, you will probably, uh, everyone else, that uh, you can probably ask uh, uh, any questions from the last talk on the group uh, networking sessions and come back to you. Um, then I would like to ask you, how did it start, uh, the, you, your idea with, um, with this after talk sessions? Well, it was essentially um, an accident, I would say, or at least feeling a void, because uh, with this tight schedule of the online event, uh, I was so sort of missing the the part where in 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 presence presentations, uh, the the crowd will already uh, swarm to the speaker after the session and ask their questions, and from which then further discussions would arise. And I was sort of missing that, and I also saw well at the end of the sessions, not necessarily all the questions could be asked because of a tight schedule. So I thought, mm, how about simply make a breakout and uh, like a B side of questions for the for the speaker while the main stage is being set up for the next one. Yeah, definitely, uh, uh, definitely an aspect that is normally very, uh, very common in in this conference is that everyone just goes up to the speaker mm -hmm. and just asks all all the questions that maybe aren't fit for like just having a, at length talk about it. So, is this your first GoForCon, or have you been here before? Well, it, this is my fourth GoFor conference. Um, uh, one uh, was it the first EU one in Iceland. I skipped last year and it was twice in London the past two years. And now this is my fourth one and the first online one. Awesome. <laughs> uh, where are you from? Just curious. I'm from Austria, Vienna. Mm, very close. <laughs> and it's, it would have been a fun ride also to Berlin. Um, uh, sadly, the Go community in, in Vienna is very small. So oh, that's sad. Uh, it's only starting up, essentially. Uh, do you work with Go? I do. Uh, sadly, not. Uh, I only work in on private time. So by day, I work in Java and C plus plus, and by night, I work in Go, saving the world or so th something. So mainly uh, <laughs> private and then free time projects. Most notably, I wrote a level editor for a computer game. So everything in Go, including a user interface. Oh, that's very cool. Uh, the, particularly, I'm particularly impressed by the user interface. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not my thing at all. <laughs> um, so any tips you would like to give for the community? Today? For the community, well, especially here in, in the conference, I would say uh, simply connect with people. So that's why we, why we have this conference. And the, given this opportunity, it's very easy then also to get well in, in bigger discussions with audio, with video, and not just the chat, which is also in part why I wanted to have these, these breakout sessions, great as they are. So, 
if you see something that is missing, you can be the change that you want to see in the world. That is definitely a great philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and one uh, everyone should try to live by. Uh, well, I would like to thank you so much for your time. I will let you go to work now. <laughs> okay. And yeah. let everyone go to the, to the um, this, uh, how do you call this? Oh, I, I'm missing the words right now. The um, session? No, the other thing, the delivery hero boot, uh, that they will have oh. this quiz. Uh, they will have this quiz um, with prices. So we encourage everyone to be there. And if you want to uh, do what Kristen has been doing, feel free to also uh, jump in and be the change you want to see, like you said. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So thank you, Paula. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for your time. Bye. See ya.